There was a man named James, actually a, a brother of Jesus, a half-brother of Jesus. Didn't believe that his brother was who his brother believed that he was until he met his resurrected brother after his brother was crucified. James, the oldest, younger brother uh, of Jesus, right, wrote an epistle for us about his brother Jesus and about having faith in him. And James is the one who actually says, the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. The early church fathers say this about James, that his nickname was Camel Knees. Camel Knees. I don't know if you've ever seen the knee of a camel, but they look really worn. They look really worn, really beat up. Why was James' nickname Camel Knees? Why would James be on his knees so much that they would give wear and tear? Right. Well, he listened to his brother. He listened to his brother about the power of prayer and he saw the example of his resurrected brother too, a uh, brother who prayed. And so James believed because he received the truth. A prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Today, uh, as we talk about being an honorable person, living an honorable life, this midweek Lent sermon series, I invite you to listen to Pastor Lou's message. Go online with us. Come here in person, 11 a.m., 7 p.m. We're talking about honoring God with our knees. Honoring God with our knees, and I couldn't help but think of James and his powerful verse about prayer. And I can't help also but think about this past weekend. Uh, many of you know I was due to preach. I actually preached Saturday night, but was feeling pretty nauseated. And after that service, wasn't feeling too well. Uh, that nauseation went into a different uh, state, and all of a sudden I was unable to preach on Sunday morning. So I was not here, but I did have a sermon. I did have a sermon. I had a sermon on John 9. Thank you, Pastor Chad. Thank you, Andrew Brazil, for filling in in the gym and also in the sanctuary. You guys gave great messages on, on Sunday morning. But the message I had planned at a couple different points about faith, about the blind man's faith. And it ties in, so stick with me here. I'm going to give you a little bit of a sermon, not just a devotion. But what we know about faith, based on John 9, is that faith has a story. Certainly that man had a story, and you have a story. And faith just doesn't have a story, a testimony of how God has demonstrated his power in your life. But faith also obeys. Faith also obeys. We see that because this blind man literally had blind faith. All he did was hear the words, he didn't see Jesus. Jesus spit on the ground, made mud, put it on his eyes, and then Jesus said, go to the pool and wash. And what did he do? He went and washed because that's what faith does. Faith obeys. Faith obeys. And so think about this for a moment. Right? Have you heard the voice of God? If you have, have you listened? Right? Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they listen to me. Right? Faith has a story. And faith obeys. And stick with me here a little bit more. There's a song that God's been really been using in my life. It's called Spirit Lead Me. And some of the lyrics are this. This has been a prayer for me actually for the past three months since I first heard this song. If you say it's wrong, then I'll say no. If you say release, I'm letting go. If you're in it with me, I'll begin. And when you say jump, I'm diving in. If you say be still, then I will wait. If you say to trust, I will obey. Teach me how to follow your ways. Right, this is, is faith. Faith obeys. And I'll go so far to say this. Faith not only obeys, faith goes on its knees. Right, why would I say that? Right, I don't know if you've ever prayed. I don't know if you've ever been on your knees in prayer, but there's something humble, there's something vulnerable, a surrender right, that takes place. God, I'm casting all my anxiety on you because I know that you care for me. I'm submitting to you. Right. Faith obeys. Faith prays. Right. There's been times in my life as a dad and just as a human being right, where I give advice and all of a sudden someone actually does what I told them to do and all of a sudden they look at me and they say, you actually knew what you were talking about. Right. Maybe it's as a coach, this has happened several times, or maybe they don't say it, but they look at me like, and they look at them and like, yep, that's right. If you did it that way all the time, you would have been good, but now you finally get it. Yes, listen to me, please. Right? And it's not about me, this is about Jesus. Right? But I think there's so many times in our life where in our relationship with Jesus, because faith obeys, right? you actually knew what you were talking about, Jesus. Right? Think about that. Right? Did Jesus know what he was talking about when he encouraged us to pray? Did James know what he was talking about when he encouraged us to pray and, and talk to us about the power of prayer? What is the power of prayer? Does prayer change God or does prayer change us? So oftentimes in my life, right, I live in the reality that prayer changes me. 
Right? I said that verse from Peter, cast all your anxiety in Him because He cares for us. Philippians says when you're anxious, do what? Pray. Give it to God. Give Him the burden. He wants to carry it for us. He wants to give us a peace that surpasses all human understanding that happens in the power of prayer when we obey, when we go to our knees, when we give that which causes us so much anxiety, takes away so much life. Right? When we give it to God, when we give Him control. And so faith has a story. Faith obeys. And I pray that we obey Jesus by praying. By praying that we would honor God with our knees, that we would honor God by listening to Him and giving Him that which is causing us anxiety, that which is causing us worry. So may we trust in Jesus and may we pray ever more. Amen.